Good day. It is a great pleasure and an honor to be part uh, of this uh, event, this celebration. Happy birthday, Basarab. Allow me to share my screen so that you can uh, see my text. So beyond religion, Orthodox Christianity in transdisciplinary perspective. Forgetfulness of wisdom and identity seems to be the dominant of contemporary societies, especially those whose rhythms draw on the modern obsession with what's new, with recent things. The knowledge gathering culture of such societies does not help either, as new data piles up on top of all the information, information which most times ends in the pit of oblivion before having been processed and learned from. No wonder we end up forgetting many things, including our own identity. Traditional societies with their oral culture, living memory and wisdom gathering processes fare much better, but not us information oriented cultures. As we are overwhelmed by the amount of data we collect, the meaning and the connection of things elude us. Christians in general, and Orthodox Christians in particular have not escaped this trap, traditional though some of us might claim to be. Clogged with the information we have gathered in history and having forgotten the traditional processes of discerning wisdom, we have ended up misrepresented our identity. Just think of how we understand Christianity as religion. Jesus Christ and Paul the apostle went to the synagogues of their time, places of religious significance, to find potential listeners. And when they found, they guided the converts away from religion to life, truth and beauty, to the fullness of life. It should not come as a surprise that their converts called themselves disciples, students, learners, and that they understood Christianity as a philosophical school in the sense of philosophy as a way of life not religion. For many centuries, in fact, Christian disciples understood religion as paganism. In turn, contemporary Christians drag the people away from life and give them religion with all its problems, which become increasingly obvious with the time passing. Just think of the, more, the human cost of murderous religious wars, taken either literally or figuratively from the unbearable spectacle of Christian disunity to hatred for everything different, and from the hatred of Orthodox against Orthodox to the religiously sanctioned genocide of the Ukrainian people under the pretext of a myth. Become religion, Christianity, including Orthodox Christianity, has severed its connection with life and things, misrepresented even the sense of religion the way most religions do. As Basarab Nicolescu reminds us, religion means that which binds things again, not that which separates. If there is something Christians generally and Orthodox Christians in particular need to address with utmost urgency, that is our identity, an identity we misunderstand if we have not altogether forgotten. For Christianity, especially Orthodox Christianity is not a religion and it should not behave as one, isolationist, intolerant, and murderous in the name of ideology and out of thirst for power. Accordingly, I call this perception into question. My own research shows that originally, as disciples of the teacher, Christians consider Christianity a school, as Pierre Adot would have it, uh, one that trains people for life. There are many elements within Christ's gospel that support this view, and the same goes for the available ecclesial evidence, whether written or chanted or painted. Just look at this second century icon of the mystical supper or the last supper, uh, representing Jesus and his disciples as philosophers. The Christian phenomenon, including its orthodox iteration, was never meant to be reduced to the status of a religion whose ritual obscure obscures all other aspects, as Francis Young has pointed out. 
True, Christianity has emulated various religious traditions in history, from which it has borrowed a range of elements, including ritual, and has even innovated in matters religious. But in so doing, it has utilized religious channels for the purposes of communicating Christian wisdom to religious audiences, not for dismissing wisdom or for growing oblivious of its own identity. In time, unfortunately, the religious aspect has become prevalent, bringing Christianity as a school of life almost to extinction. This is the truth we must realize and the problem we must address. Against this backdrop, and apart from the need for Christianity to renew awareness of its origins and identity, Nicolescu's concept of trans-religious attitude is an excellent tool for grasping the Christian phenomenon. As the author describes it, this attitude corresponds to that which links beings and things and in consequence, induces in the very depths of the human being an absolute respect for others to whom he or she is linked by their sharing a common life on one and the same earth. This precisely is what Jesus suggests when he points out his intention to fulfill the law and the prophets, not to abolish them. And knowing Jesus as the logos of all existence, law, wisdom, and prophecy, the early Christians took his words as a promise to all cultures to become mature. It is this common denominator, namely seeking maturity, that allowed the early Christians to assess and to welcome the contributions of other cultures as intrinsically Christian. Their attitude was transcultural and transreligious. Recent research has alerted us about the non-religious nature of early Christianity. The time has come for us Christians, including Orthodox Christians, to interpret these findings. And Nicolescu's concept of trans-religious attitude is extremely helpful to that end. Echoing Konstantin Noika's conviction that so far homo christianus is the highest human achievement, Nicolescu understands orthodox spirituality, for example, represented by St. John Climacus's Ladder of Divine Ascent as mapping human spiritual evolution. Elsewhere, he refers to the icon as the fullest insofar as transfigured image of nature. From this vantage point, I would say Christianity constitutes a framework for human development, for cultivating the noble life, for realizing humanity's full potential. Such Christianity in trans-religious and trans-cultural fashion appreciates the views, the values and the victories other cultures have achieved in their quest for spiritual maturity. This perception of Christianity finds abundant confirmation in its early and medieval history, times when Christians viewed themselves as disciples of a philosophical school. It is to this wisdom that we must return in order to retrieve Christianity's forgotten identity. Basarab Nicolescu's concept of trans-religious attitude points us in the right direction. <laughs>